<laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. And first of all, again, thank you very much to the National Forum for having us here to present our proposal. And as Terry said, our title of our project is The Real Project. And as you can see, it's an acronym for Reimagining Experiential Academic Learning. But real is probably more than that. It also lends to the essence of the project, which we hope is an authentic form of learning. So in terms of who are involved, I have a technical hitch and we're not going to... <laughs> Excellent. That's why we are a team. Uh, I, I, I can do the, uh, some of the presenting, but not the techn technical part. So as Terry said, it's been led by the Letterkenny Institute of Technology and I'm Brona Heaven, a law lecturer from the Institute of Technology in Letterkenny and Siobhan Cullen is also on the team and she's our Head of Department of Law and, law and Humanities. And we are happily partnered in this project with the University of Limerick and we have Dr Lydia Bracken here who's also a law lecturer and also their Director of Clinical Legal Education. And we have a novice in the field of experiential learning from the Institute of Technology in Carlow and we have Sai Reddy who is a law lecturer there. So that's our project team. In terms of what does the project involve? Well, the primary focus of the project is to allow for the explicit development of student skills in undergraduate level uh, third level education. In compliance with the requirements of the Hunt Report and also the, gov the recent Government Action Plan for Education 2018. This arises in the discipline of law in response to the recognition of a particular gap or deficit in the area of education and law. Traditionally, legal education has, and sadly probably it still arises in a lot of instances, relies on a very doctri doctrinal or academic approach to education, which provides minimal or limited opportunities for skill acquisition of the law students. This isn't the holistic experience that most students are now seeking and probably require in terms of their own employability. So the simple purpose of this project is to reimagine the, pre the pedagogic approach to law by providing education through experience, experiential learning. It's going to be an evidence-based approach where we will collate and create a resource, resources for the delivery of this, that will form the foundation for a national alliance to apply this novel pedagogy to a discipline which, as I say, it is previously relatively underutilised. In terms of, then I'm going to move on and look at delivery before I pass to my colleagues. So looking at the deliverables, I've been brief, briefly described up here. So the first thing is, as I've already mentioned, it's an evidence-based model and framework. So the first phase of the project will involve research, and that will involve several phases, but starting with the research of the current offerings of experiential learning in law in Ireland. We will then look at the experiential learning that is available nationally and internationally in other disciplines and in law. And we will then be looking to bring it back to, uh, to collate all of those and evaluate them with the view to developing a model peculiar or unique to the Irish framework. And as we go along, then we will be in the course implementing it, we will be piloting that framework and um, reviewing it as we go through. The idea being that this evidence-based model will act as a benchmark and give the use of experiential learning credibility among our federal academics. The second real result will be the student engagement. And we, we've heard a lot about student engagement with a lot of the projects. And as with many of the other projects, we will be involving the students in the initial consultations and in collaborating and developing the programme. But probably, obviously, experiential learning is learner-centred. So the actual delivery of experiential learning is primarily focused on the student. So for it to be in any way real or authentic, it couldn't happen if the students weren't actively really engaged in it. As I've mentioned already, this will lead to the creation of a repository of resources. But probably more importantly than the creation of this repository is we want to encourage their use into the future. So it's going to be really important that we disseminate and promote this repository of resources, not just physical resources which they can access on and off as they need, but also in terms of peer support for academics who decide to engage in this type of learning into the future. And then ultimately, we'd be hoping that this embeds a culture of experiential learning, where academics and students alike recognise that knowledge on it doesn't stand apart from experience. And it's ultimately that they will align student experience or their experience of the knowledge as where the real learning occurs. So basically, their personal values and experiences will complement their discipline knowledge to create real learning. And it, Throughout all of that, we'll be supporting staff engagement. It brings me back to the top. So I'm going to hand over to Lydia, who's going to talk to, about the, the staff engagement in it. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Brona. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Lydia Brack, and I'm from the University of Limerick. Um, and I'm going to talk about Delta criteria in particular. So, the School of Law at UL was was lucky enough to be awarded a Delta Award from the National Forum earlier this year in recognition of the disciplinary excellence that's already undertaken. Um, so, this project will allow UL to share that expertise and to further our own commitment to the Delta framework. Um, the project itself also directly aligns with many of the Delta criteria. Um, so firstly, strategy and capacity building is identified as a key focus for the project because experiential learning is central to the priorities of each of our institutions, but to date our efforts have been rather insular, as indeed are the efforts of most law schools in Ireland. So this project will build staff capacity by identifying best practice in experiential learning and by creating a community of practice whereby resources can be shared between the institutions. Um, the project also focuses on the design of learning because we need a systematic and coherent plan to deliver experiential learning in law. Um, the first phase of the project involves academic-led research leading to evidence-based approaches. So these findings will then be used to create open access resources which will include um, student experience guidelines, assessment rubrics um, and academic support networks. So this will allow for collaborative curriculum design that is informed by consultations with key stakeholders. Um, also, teaching and learning practice is enhanced in the project because students will be key stakeholders and indeed partners in the project. Um, so their input will be essential in the co-creation of resources and those resources in turn will be used to support the students themselves. Um, so in this way, the project delivers tangible outcomes that are aligned with the Delta framework. Um, so I'll now pass over to Siobhan who's going to talk about the implementation um, for the project. Thanks, Brona and Lydia. I'm Siobhan Collin, also from Letterkenny IT, and I'm going to explain how we're going to go about attaining uh, the aims that have been outlined there. Um, there'll be three fee, um, there'll be three um, key phases to the project, and uh, we estimate that each of these will be roughly six months. The, uh, the initial phase uh, of research, we're champions of experiential learning, but we want this project to be uh, evidence-based. Uh, and so the, the first phase will be to conduct the research. Um, the uh, second phase will be the development of those resources, which Brona and Lydia have talked about there, uh, benchmarking, drafting guidelines, policy, uh, assessment rubrics, handbooks, uh, for the various experiential learning modules that we currently run and that we tend that we intend uh, to develop, and the third uh, phase then is the implementation of the project um, um, in the uh, three institutions uh, and the evaluation uh, of that. Um, the three C's that we uh, consider to be crucial throughout the project are uh, collaboration, consultation and communication. And I'm going to talk uh, briefly to each of these now. Um, beginning with the consultation, um, the, th the three key stakeholders, uh, not in any particular order, uh, will be consulted really extensively from beginning to end, the academic staff, the students uh, and the industry partners. Uh, so in terms of each of those briefly, uh, we feel that this project aligns really well to the professional development uh, framework and particularly the values, the values of collaboration, inclusivity, student-centeredness uh, in particular. Um, and we also feel that it's going to give some key opportunities to academic staff in law uh, to enhance their professional development opportunities. In terms of student engagement, we very much see students as partners in the project. We are um, developing this uh, based on a, a co-design ethos and uh, students will be consulted throughout and I'll talk uh, more about that in a moment. And the industry partners, by which I mean the legal community, both academic uh, but, but uh, mainly the legal profession, the pro bono community, all those organisations out there uh, that employ law students uh, and that offer placements to law students are going to be uh, consulted with uh, during that key phase. In terms of the collaboration then, um, as you can see there are three uh, institutions, three law schools involved. There will be a central steering committee involving the key uh, project team, uh, informed by uh, the uh, industry uh, advisory panel which will be both national and international and we think it's particularly important to have some international input because although experiential learning is at a relatively early stage in Ireland in legal education, it's had a more advanced 
advanced stage in other jurisdictions, not least the UK uh, and other uh, European countries. Uh, so we want to have uh, industry input. Uh, and the focus groups there, which will inform everything uh, that's done uh, during the project, uh, will be at local level in the three institutions, and they'll involve a student focus group, an academic staff focus group, and a teaching and learning uh, focus group where we consult with colleagues around the pedagogy. Um, as part of those focus groups, there'll be more than uh, consultation, there'll be peer mentoring. Uh, we're already piloting peer mentoring in law uh, at, at Letterkenny, uh, and we found it to be very fruitful in terms of the student experience. Um, and we see that as a key aspect of this project. Um, initially, uh, there'll be a focus group, um, just to, to move on to the communication aspect, there'll be a focus group for students in each of the three institutions, there'll be a focus group for students staff in each of the three institutions and we would see the mentoring happening within those focus groups, so inter-institutional, but we also see an opportunity for some cross-institutional peer mentoring, where a student, for example, who's done work placement in law in Limerick might mentor a student who's about to do it in Letterkenny. A student who's done street law in Letterkenny might mentor a student in Carlo who's about to undertake that type uh, of learning. Um, so we see peer mentoring uh, as key. In terms of how we'll communicate, we have a fairly broad geographical uh, expanse between us. Um, in terms of how we're going to achieve this, we would envisage that the steering committee will meet um, by uh, VC uh, or Skype for Business on a fortnightly basis. The documents will be drafted using Google Drive, uh, and then there will be consultation with the advisory panel, the industry partners, at each of those three phases. Um, at least once uh, during those um, each of those phases and then the focus groups we would envisage more ongoing consultation two-way consultation both um, online and and face to face so those are the three uh, C's of the project, the collaboration, the consultation uh, and the communication. Um, in terms of the impact and sustainability of this project, uh, we believe that uh, its real impact will be its transformative value both for academic staff uh, and for students. Initially in relation to the academic aspect, uh, it's a new pedagogy in law um, and it's aligned to the professional development of staff and we see that there'll be real opportunities opportunities there uh, for staff to be supported um, in uh, perhaps experimenting with experiential learning. Um, the uh, shared resources will allow the early adopters, who are crucial to any new innovation, to maybe have a go at trying experiential learning because the resources are there and have been developed. I'm going to hand over to Brona now, uh, who's going to conclude. Sorry, just looking then in terms of the, we've looked at sustainability and impact in terms of the academics and this moves it on to the student experience and I suppose the first one is the reimagined learning. In our view, the experiential learning is, a le is just at a deeper, more realistic, re I don't overdo the use of the word real, but a more authentic form of learning and by participation alone the, the it yields much more beneficial learning for the students. Their skills will be enhanced. The use of peer mentoring will make it a supported environment and ultimately that will give them the personal development and lifelong learning skills that they will take away, which are crucial to their employability going forward. Self-efficacy skills sort of summarising it, where they'll be able to recognise from their experience, you know, they'll be able to evaluate their own performance and experiences as to whether they have um, achieved real learning. And then ultimately, on a very general level, take a, hopefully having secured success and law. Um, it, it, will have, if, it will be a huge disciplinary culture shift and we, I suppose reverting to the professional development framework aims where initially you're trying to encourage people to participate, then you're going to empower them and ultimately their teaching and learning will be enhanced and then that will result in a contagion effect because, well certainly the idea for this project originated in our own experience of street law whereby basically starting out on a limb in terms of doing a little bit of experiential learning, it has yielded, the benefits it has yielded have been exceeded our expectations. And not only that, is it has encouraged others to participate similarly. So it's definitely contagious, that kind of success. Hopefully that will snowball into policy development where experiential learning will become embedded in the policy development for legal education. And ultimately, our real legacy will be, if we can achieve that in law, well then effectively, it, in our view, it is achievable in any of the other academic disciplines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.